You know what's really hard? Is running a YouTube channel on travel and adventure during COVID because there's not a lot of travel to be had, there's not a lot of adventure to be had, but here in Washington DC, if you've been watching the news recently, it's kind of an adventurous place. Have you ever seen those movies like Olympus Has Fallen or I don't know, just the ones where the White House gets overran and the president gets kidnapped and like they storm government buildings and you think that could never happen. Our security apparatus would never allow that to happen. Well, mm, yeah, last week that kind of happened and this week, since the inauguration is coming up, they've beefed up security about 10,000% and you can almost guarantee that nothing like that can happen at all this upcoming week, but we wanted to go out and show you guys the security situation in Washington, D.C., which they're now calling Fortress Washington. these jersey barriers for all the alleyways we are at the edge of we'll say China down Chinatown and um, Massachusetts Avenue Maggie and I live just a block that way and so right outside of our apartment is where everything is blocked off and there's an insane amount of security we'll call this for the sake of the video the green zone so we're in the green zone now it's very safe because there's about 2,000 no not 2,500 25,000 uh, National Guard troops barriers on all the alleyways and in front of some of, the, some of the parking garages so if you weren't aware you wouldn't be able to get your car out of the parking garage for like the next week um, and I don't know who you'd contact to get a concrete Jersey barrier moved. If you recall the incident in Nashville with the RV and the incredibly large explosion which is pretty sophisticated actually if they were to get a vehicle between buildings like this it would only amplify the energy of such an explosion so all the alleyways in what we'll call the green zone are essentially blocked by these barriers. I am by no means a security expert but we're just gonna walk around and show you all the different measures that they're taking to make sure this is the most secure inauguration in the history of our country. We're approaching the field office, the district office of the FBI. This is not the federal, like the, big, the nationwide FBI building. This is just for the District of Columbia. Um, normally we could walk straight through to the National Mall here, but it's blocked and they have like a little command center set up, like an 18 wheeler truck command center thing. And there's lots of FBI guys. By the way, by the way, a lot of the FBI guys, the, they're totally undercover, but we live here. We know, we've seen them. They look like, we'll just say like, Duck Dynasty guys, like big beards, wearing a lot of flannel, but I know they're FBI because they go in and out of that building and I don't think they're doing any hunting around here. So they will infiltrate your group for sure. So as we showed you about a block from where we live, there's an ECP and then two blocks further, there's another ECP as you get even closer to the National Mall for a non-military crowd and ECP is an entry control point. Okay, so welcome to Fortress, Fortress Washington. So the second ECP there, there's a metal detector. You have to empty your pockets. They gotta check all your bags. A guy rode up on a bike and they were like, no bikes. And he said, do you know how far I have to go to go around these control points? And they're like, yeah, Union Station, which by the way is way over there and around. So the entire National Mall is cordoned off with these checkpoints and that is the most intense, it's way more thorough than uh, TSA. the TSA, we'll say, we'll say that. So riddle me this, I have a paradox. We are preparing for the inauguration. They're building the platforms, they've built the stages. We just heard Lady Gaga rehearsing, we're pretty sure. But the mayor of DC is telling everyone, do not come. 
do not come. They've closed all the hotels. Airbnbs actually canceled all of the reservations in DC for the week of the inauguration. So even if you wanted to come to the inauguration, there's nowhere for you to sleep. They've closed off, we've shown you like two blocks away from the National Mall. You can't even get on the National Mall. I don't know if they're gonna open it for the inauguration. I don't know what the plan is. I don't think anybody knows what the plan is. We're just waiting to see what happens. We tried to walk down towards the White House and the Ellipse, we got rejected. She said, this is where the pin stops. She didn't mean like a pin keeping humans captive. She meant Pennsylvania Avenue, but we couldn't go any farther. Um, yeah, so we can't exactly show you a lot because everything is blocked off. So now we're about to leave the green zone, going back out into the scary city of DC. <laughs> it's not that scary. If you run out of Jersey barriers or fences, dump trucks will usually do the job to block a road. Or snow plows. Or snow plows. Especially when it's not snowing. Especially if you don't need them because it's not snowing. But what would the police do if they were using all their snow plows to block the roads and then it snowed? Or what if they're using the dump trucks to block the roads and then um, everyone's dumpsters filled up? Are they considering these things? <laughs> We're outside the wire now, we're back in normal DC. Guys, no kidding, last night we're walking home, we saw a guy take a poo in the street. And Maggie's like, what is that man doing? And it's like, he's, that man is taking a poo. He did wipe his butt, he left the toilet paper right there though. In the middle of the city. We're back, we're back almost home now after our little walkabout, which really we couldn't get much access. So as you can see, if you try to enter get close to the ECPs and even gain access to the National Mall area, you're going to be faced with guardsmen with uh, M4s. They don't have any magazines actually in their rifles, but I assume they have magazines full of bullets on their person. I don't know. But they're slightly intimidating, especially if you're non-military, non-veteran, never been exposed to these guys. This might, you might be kind of like, what's going on here? They just stop everyone and say, where are you headed and why? It's not that you can't drive that direction, it's just you have to have a, a good reason to drive that direction, I suppose. I don't know. I haven't tried yet. Thank you.